Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be going through my garbage. It's been about six months since I did my last empties video and my empties bin was getting very full. So I thought it was time to go through everything. I love doing empties because obviously I've used the entire product. So I have a pretty good sense of whether or not I enjoyed it. And of course I will be giving you a review on every single empty that I emptied, <laughs> including whether or not I will be repurchasing it. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. Let me know all of your thoughts on all of my empties today. If you've tried these products, what are your thoughts on them? What are some products that you've also recently Recently empty. So I hope you guys are gonna enjoy and let's get right into it. So I separated everything into the different categories. We got skincare, body care, hair care, and makeup. So we're gonna start off first with hair care. And the Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray, I feel like, is in almost every single one of my empties, I believe. I have gone through so many cans of this stuff. By far, one of my most used and most emptied hair care products. I feel like I cannot not have this in my everyday collection. And even when I travel, I always make sure to bring a mini version of this because it's just such a necessity for my hair. So if you're not familiar with this product, it's a texturizing spray, meaning it gives that like pieciness as well as a little bit of volume to the hair. The problem with most texturizing sprays that I've tried is that they make your hair feel disgusting. Um, they'll kind of give this like waxy or dirty feeling to the hair, which I really, really hate because I like to wash my hair as little as possible. So if I'm able to keep my hair feeling clean, that's ideal, and as soon as I put in a product that gives me that like um, sticky finish, I need to wash it out almost immediately. So this texturizing spray is really nice because it doesn't have that sticky finish, but it still gives you the texture and the hold of a really great texturizing spray. I especially like to use this when I have any type of wave in my hair. It gives it a little bit of that extra volume. Let me actually show you what it does with a not empty bottle because I have one here in my office too. Oh, wait, <laughs> it's sitting right next to me. This is a little mini version. See, I'm telling you, I love this so much. I made sure to keep it on my filming vanity so that I can use it to retouch my hair while filming. What I like to do is I will hold up my hair and I'll spray it towards the mid lengths of my hair and slightly at my root to give me a little bit of lift. And then I just let my hair fall into the spray. Oh, it smells amazing. You see how that just gave my hair a little bit of extra oomph, whereas this side is pretty limp and lifeless. Let's fix that. I already have probably like three to five extra bottles of this already, so I don't necessarily have to repurchase, but just know as soon as I run out of this, I repurchase almost immediately. I have two more Orbe products that I finished. They're little mini travel versions of the shampoo and conditioner for beautiful color. I actually took these with me on my recent vacation. I actually really did not enjoy the shampoo and conditioner. My hair was such a disaster during my vacation. I was just not able to make it work for me. My curls were not working for me. When I would blow dry my hair, it just didn't really look very good. My hair just was not thriving on vacation and I'm sure it had a lot to do with the humidity, but it also had a lot to do with the products that I brought with me. And I just didn't feel like the conditioner was rich enough for my hair. I do like a very, very, very rich conditioner. I almost always use a, a hair mask in place of a conditioner when I wash my hair. And it just really didn't make my hair feel super soft. And then the shampoo was fine, but it's definitely not something that I would repurchase. There's other shampoo and conditioner combos that I prefer far, far, far more. So these were kind of a fail for me. I would not repurchase them. This over here is another product that I brought with me on vacation. It's Moroccan Oil Curl Defining Cream. I just spoke about this in my last video, which was my five best and five worst. This did end up in the five worst. <laughs> I really did not like this. The only reason why I finished this is because I took it with me on vacation and I was using so much of it, just trying to get it to do something for my hair. I mentioned all these points in my last video, so I'm not gonna go on and on about it. Normally when I look for my curl cream, is something that will make my curls look bouncy and defined and shiny and just beautiful. And this literally did nothing for my hair. And I felt like this literally did nothing for my curls. It almost made them look frizzier. It was just a super disappointing product. It was very ineffective for me. So this is another product that I'm actually very happy. I no longer have in my collection because I will absolutely not be repurchasing and I would not recommend it. Yet another product that I brought with me on my vacation. This is a little mini travel size of the Pureology Color Fanatic Multitasking Leave-In Spray. This is actually a product that I've been using for a very long time. I've had this in and out of my collection for years, like I would say at least 
over five years. Um, and it's a really awesome product because it's truly like a multitasker. It says over here that it has 21 essential benefits. It's supposed to protect against heat, protect against UV. It's supposed to be anti-frizz, soften your hair, add shine. It's supposed to be good for your color. There's a million benefits or supposed benefits to this product. And I definitely like this product but it's not my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite hair product that I have. I feel like it's almost impossible for a product to do all of those things, to do all of the 21 things. When I use this, I use it mainly as a heat protector when my hair is damp and uh, to add a little bit of softness to my hair. But I don't find that this is incredibly effective for like shine or anti-frizz, which is a big thing for, for me personally. That's what I look for the most in my prep products. But I do like this as a heat protectant and I do like it to, you know, just lightly detangle and soften my hair um, without adding too much heaviness to it. I would almost rather use one product that's just really, really good at one specific thing than have a multitasker that's supposed to do 21 things. Because I feel like more likely than not, you're going to have um, a more effective product when it's really focused in on that one concern. So with that said, I would repurchase this and I actually do have a full size bottle of this in my vanity currently that I like to use every once in a while, but it's not my absolute favorite and I would be totally fine without in my collection. I feel like I've been very spicy about all my little reviews, but it's just how I feel guys. <laughs> all right, so that is it for all the hair products. Now let's move into body care. And I have this Native Body Wash here. I love Native Body Wash. It's probably one of my most used, if not my most used brand of body washes. They smell really nice, they don't strip my skin, and they get me nice and clean. What more can you want from a body wash? This is also sulfate-free, paraben-free, dye-free, and phthalate-free, which I always appreciate. This one, however, I did not love. It is the collab with Baked by Melissa. It's called Tie-Dye Vanilla Cupcake. And when I ordered this, I really imagined great things for it. I imagine great things for us. This was probably one of my lesser favorite scents that I've tried from Native. It is so sickly sweet. It was almost unbearable. Like I really did not enjoy my experience washing my body with this because the, the sweetness was so, so, so intense. But I definitely do prefer the lesser sweet scents that Native has. Even their vanilla and coconut scent is really nice and it's perfectly balanced. Like it's not too overly sweet. So with that said, I would not repurchase the scent, although I don't think it's available anymore, but I love Native body washes just as a whole. And I already have one in my shower going already. Next we have a body cream from Josie Marin. This is the Whipped Argon Oil Ultra Hydrating Body Butter. If you know me and you know my channel, you know how much I've spoken about this product time and time again. It is one of my all-time favorite body butters. It's so deeply hydrating, especially at this time of year when I honestly feel like no matter what I put on my body, it just is not hydrating enough. This is one of those few products that will really make a true difference in the way that my skin feels. What I really like about this is the fact that there is argan oil in here. So it gives that really luxurious, uh, kind of slightly oily feel to the skin. And that may not sound nice, but it it's really, really nice. Whereas a lot of body creams that I've tried, I find after they absorb into the skin, they just don't really moisturize and they don't make my skin feel or look or become less dry. This is just really effective. I've gone through tubs of this. My boyfriend also is obsessed with this, which is probably why I tend to go through them so quickly because he loves to share them with me. Um, and the pure vanilla bean scent is heavenly. If you like vanilla, but a vanilla that isn't sickly sweet like this one. Oh my God, you would absolutely adore this. They also have a couple other fragrances, even a unscented version. So really something for everybody, but the vanilla bean one is highly recommended. I will be repurchasing this. I already have repurchased it, so. Next, I have a deodorant from Air. This is the Taos deodorant, T-A-O-S, and it's in the scent Palo Santo Blood Orange. I really, really enjoyed this deodorant, and I actually found out recently that this brand no longer exists or went out of business. And I'm so upset because I really enjoyed both this deodorant and their sunscreen. I think I screamed, no, when I found out I was pretty sad about it. I want a candle in this scent. It smells so, so good. I want my entire house to smell like this, honestly. It's a little bit woodsy, but then it has that freshness from that blood orange and it just smells so good. So if you guys know of any home fragrances, or even other deodorants that have a scent like that, that's really woodsy but citrusy, let me know in the comments because I need something to replace this. But besides the scent, I mean, this deodorant worked really well. I really enjoyed it. I totally would have repurchased it, but I can't. <sighs> okay, now let's move into skincare. I have a lot of skincare products here to talk about. 
First things first, I have a mask here from Agent Nature. It's called the Holly Bright Resurface Glass Face Mask. I heard incredible things about this mask and I purchased this thinking that I would have a new face after applying this. Turns out that didn't happen at all. I really didn't love this mask. Um, I felt like it did almost nothing to my skin. When I was doing research on it, that this mask really sounded like a dream. Let me tell you what it's supposed to do. So it says that there is a combination of powerful ingredients, including aloe vera, French silk peptides, bataya, hyaluronic acid, a cucumber, and it's a brightening, beauty boosting, resurfacing treatment that's deeply hydrating, calming, and soothing while also actively and gently resurfacing and refining the texture of your skin and minimizing the appearance of fine lines, wrinkles, and pores. Doesn't that sound like such a dream? So you can imagine my disappointment when this really didn't do anything crazy for my skin. I didn't notice any um, intense retexturizing. I didn't notice even an intense after mask glow after I applied it. I actually found that it slightly dried out my skin. I didn't really feel like it was even moisturizing, which is a huge claim for, for this mask. And this is all surprising because this has really great reviews online. Like people love this thing. So it just didn't work for my skin. And I think that's always important to remember with any product that you ever see anybody review. Keep in mind that these are just personal experiences, um, whether it's a negative or a positive review. The way products react on individual people is so, so, so personal. So it's just always important to do research, learn about the ingredients of the products that you wanna try and try and figure out for yourself if you think it's gonna be a good fit for you. But with my experience, I just didn't feel like this did much and it was very, very expensive. It was about $120, so very, very expensive for a very teeny tiny little jar. We're gonna get a little bit more positive now because this is one of my favorite products. This is the SkinCeuticals Floritin CF Vitamin C Serum. Um, I finished these again in probably every single one of my empties videos, by far my favorite favorite, or at least one of my top three favorite vitamin C serums. After I finished this, I actually took a really long time to repurchase it. I only recently repurchased it. And, and so I didn't have it in my life for a couple months. And I swear I noticed such a huge difference after I stopped using this. This is just one of the most effective skincare products. And I always, always notice that my skin is brighter, glowier, it just, is better <laughs> when I use this product and I use it every single morning. SkinCeuticals is known to have um, some of the best vitamin C serums on the market and there's a good reason for that. There's a lot of science backing up this baby and it's just, it's really good. And I've tried other ones and there's just nothing that truly compares to this. It's really just my ultimate, ultimate favorite. And it's definitely expensive and it hurts me and my wallet every time I purchase it, but my skin just loves it so much, so I bite the bullet every time. Another SkinCeuticals product that I finished here is the Retexturizing Activator. This is another product that I've been using from SkinCeuticals for a very long time, kind of on and off. This is a retexturizing serum. There's 20% glycolic acid in here. It's also hydrating as well. So the combination of the retexturizing and the hydration gives the skin this really nice glow. And it's one of my go-tos for my nighttime serum. I wouldn't say this is my ultimate favorite retexturizing serum for retexturizing. I really love the Holly Frog um, AHA BHA serum for retexturizing. That one is probably one of the most effective ones that I've tried. And the fact that it also moisturizes and kind of soothes the skin at the same time just makes it feel a little bit more gentle. I'm already using another one of these right now. It's in my rotation. And again, this is another product that I feel like I always have in my skincare routine, just on rotation. Speaking of polyfrog, this is the Shasta AHA Refining Acid Wash. And this is one of my favorite products from Holly Frog. I love a face wash that has AHA in it because you kind of get um, a two-in-one. You get to clean your face, but you also get a little bit of retexturizing at the same time. I don't really use this every single day as like my daily cleanser. I really only use it at night only. And again, when I feel like I want that little bit of extra exfoliation. So I'll go in and I'll wash my face as I normally do, but then I'll let it sit for about 30 seconds just to kind of let that AHA do a little bit of work. And then after rinsing it off, I immediately notice the difference in my skin and it just kind of makes my skin look a little bit brighter, a little bit glowier. I've grown to very much enjoy the Holly Frog products. A lot of their products work very, very well for my skin and this is definitely one of my favorites. So I haven't repurchased it yet, but I would like to. Got another cleanser here. This is from Josie Marin. It's the Pineapple Enzyme Pore Clearing Cleanser. And this is a nice cleanser. It does, it does the job. When it comes to cleansers, I actually really enjoy bouncing around and trying out different kinds. I'm not totally married to any particular cleanser, so I'm not gonna repurchase this 
just yet, um, just because I enjoy trying new ones. I feel like cleansers are that one skincare item that it's not risky trying out a bunch of different brands, you know? Like with moisturizers and serums, when you find the ones that work for you, you almost just wanna stick with them because they stay on your skin. But for products that you, that you rinse off, it's nice to test things out. I'm not repurchasing this immediately, but it's a good product. The Grown Alchemist Gentle Gel Facial Cleanser, I really, really, really enjoyed. It's a gel cleanser, so it feels very gentle. Again, it doesn't dry out the skin. It has that spa-like scent. This is actually probably a cleanser that I would go out of my way to repurchase just because I really enjoyed my experience with it. <laughs> I go through so many cleansers, it's kind of wild. Okay, this is another cleanser, but this is a cleansing oil and makeup remover from First Aid Beauty. Cleansing oils are a huge part of my routine. They are a must for me. And this did a really good job. I didn't feel like this left an oily residue on my skin. I felt like it did a good job of breaking down my makeup. It was just a, a really nice, good, cleanser. The only thing I will say about this is I felt like I went through it exceptionally quickly. Regardless, it's a good product. It works well if you're looking for a good cleansing oil that's uh, safe for sensitive skin because First Aid Beauty products are all safe for sensitive skin. It was a really nice one. This is the last time I'm gonna be talking about this product, okay? I've spoken about it in so many videos lately. I always find reasons to like bring it up, but now that uh, it, it's making an appearance in my empties, I will finally throw it out until I get a new one because I will be repurchasing this guy. This is the Element Superfluid AHA Glow Cleansing Butter. I know I just said that I like to jump around and try out different cleansing balms and cleansers and all of that, but this is one cleansing butter that I will 100% repurchasing. Taking off my makeup with this product feels like pure luxury. It is like a creamy oil texture. And it feels so hydrating and delicious when you rub it all over your face. And it has AHA in it. And as I just said, I love a product that multitasks. It's an A++ product. Um, yes, I will be repurchasing it. Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse, another product that I feel like is always in one of my empties. This is definitely, definitely one of my favorite makeup removing products. And you would use it in the same way that you would use the LMS Superfood, but it's a completely different type of texture, whereas this is a um, balmy oil. This is just a pure, very, very thin oil. So this is actually a very not oily oil. I don't find that this leaves an oily residue on the skin. It doesn't sting your eyes, which a lot of um, oil-based cleansers do. It's just a great go-to product for me that always, always works well. So I will definitely be repurchasing this. It's always in my collection. The last skincare product that I have here is from Vivier. This is the Derma V Repair Cream with Prebiotics and Antioxidants. This was a moisturizer that was recommended to me by my um, esthetician. I had really wanted to try something new. I was using the SkinCeuticals Daily Moisture for a long time and I wanted something that was just as lightweight as the SkinCeuticals Daily Moisture, but had a little bit more richness to it. And so my esthetician recommended that I try this out. And I did really enjoy this moisturizer. Really heavy moisturizers can clog my pores and make me break out. So I appreciated that this wasn't like a super thick and heavy formula, but despite it not being super thick and heavy, I, I still found that it was rich and super moisturizing. So it really was that best of both worlds. When I finished this, I really wanted to repurchase it, but I was kind of debating of whether or not I should because of the price tag. So it's a great product. It worked really well for my skin and I could see myself using this again in the future, but it's just pricey. So that's my only gripe with it. All right, that is it for all the skincare products that I finished. Now let's move on to the makeup and I do only have two products and they're both mascaras. I very, very rarely finish makeup products because I try so many products and I try to not use the same products all the time. I don't often work through an entire product, but I will work through brow products and mascaras. So these two mascaras are now ready to be thrown out. This is the M Cosmetics Pick Me Up Mascara, which is one of my favorite tube mascaras. I've been using this since they launched. I love this for days that I really want to ensure that I'm not going to get raccoon eyes because it is a tubey mascara. It comes off with water, so you're not going to get any smudging or flaking. I especially like using this on my lower lashes because there are very few mascaras that will not smudge on me even a little bit on my lower lashes, but with the tubey mascara, you really don't have to worry about that, like I said. I find it's a very natural look. Um, it doesn't give you like overly fake or dramatic or big lashes, but it gives you very natural, separated, lengthy look. So it's great for every day. This Lancome Lashy Doll is another one that is totally finished. This is another holy grail mascara of mine. It gives me length, separation, volume, definition. It curls my lashes really nicely as well. It's just a great all around mascara for me and I like that I could pretty much always be assured that this isn't going to smudge. So it's a wonderful mascara and I will definitely be repurchasing it. So to finish off this empties video, I thought it'd be fun to share with you guys two books that I finished recently. They're not technically empties, but they're things that I have technically finished. So I thought it would just be fun to share. And I honestly just wanted an excuse to share these books with you because one of them is probably 
one of my favorite books I've ever read. We have Temporary by Hilary Leicher, Leicher, and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Let's first talk about Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. I just need a moment with this book. This book became really popular and it was impossible to find anywhere, um, even in my local bookstores. And I was really desperate to get it because I really wanted to read it while I was on vacation. But then I ended up finding it available on the Indigo website and I couldn't believe my luck. I was so excited. I ended up getting it in the mail and I had purchased the um, large print version and I didn't even realize. <laughs> First, I was very disappointed and very worried that it would ruin my reading experience, but I gotta say, large print, chef's kiss. Besides all of that, this is by far one of the best books that I've read in a really long time. Piranesi and Tomorrow, 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 at like the top, top, top of my list as far as like my favorite books. But basically this book follows a couple characters through, I think it's like a couple decades as they're starting up this video game company. And honestly, when I was reading this description of the book, I didn't really think it would be something that I would be interested in. It just didn't sound that appealing to me, but because so many people were raving about it, I decided just to pick it up anyway. And I'm really happy that I did. What makes this book so amazing is the storytelling. I felt so connected to each and every character. While I was on vacation, I read this in three days. There was one day that I read the entire, entire day and I don't think I've ever done that in my life. I just could not put this book down. If you just want a really, really great story from beginning to end, please pick this up. I do not think you will regret it. And this author is just amazing. I cannot wait to read more from her. And this is the other book that I ended up reading while I was on vacation. Like I said, it's called Temporary. It's really small. I finished this pretty quickly. It's only about 170 or so pages. And this is a really silly book. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. So it's basically about this woman who is a temporary, which basically means she's constantly being placed at these different jobs. And the jobs that she's placed at are ridiculous. One of the jobs was to assist an assassin and another one was to um, fill in for a ghost in an empty house. Like they're just ridiculous and silly. And as I was reading this, I just kept giggling and laughing to myself. And it was just a really easy novel to read. It kind of reminded me of Piranesi just a little bit because just like Piranesi, you almost have to just give in to the world and accept its reality because it really doesn't make any sense at all. So it's really cute. It's a silly read. Would recommend this as well. All right, guys, that is it. Those are all of my empties from the last little bit. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts on everything that I spoke about today. Let me know some of your current empties. And if you've read either of these books, I wanna hear your reviews on them too. I'd be so curious to hear what you guys think. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy today's video and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.